Hello, welcome to the Daily News Ukraine channel. Today is February 25th and our daily review of news about Ukraine. Ukraine currently has more than UAH 150 billion for the reconstruction of housing and critical infrastructure. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said this in an interview with Forbes Ukraine, Ukrainform reports. During the Ukraine EU summit, the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, pledged 1 billion euros, over UAH 39 billion, for the rapid reconstruction program. If we summarize everything, we currently have more than UAH 150 billion. This is the amount that the Ukrainian market can use to restore housing and critical infrastructure, Shmihal said. He said that as part of the rapid recovery program, the government sets the following priorities recovery of power generation and power grids $5.8 billion, demoning of territories $0.4 billion, reconstruction of damaged housing $3.2 billion, reconstruction of critical infrastructure $5.7 billion, and economic recovery programs for small and medium-sized businesses, including Iroboda and the 5-7-9% loan program, $3.8 billion. The European Union has adopted the 10th package of sanctions against Russia. EU High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, reported this on Twitter, according to Ukraine Forum. The 10th sanctions package is adopted, 121 individuals and entities listed, significant new import-export restrictions, banning Russian propaganda outlets. We remain united in our determination to dent Russia's war machine, Borrell wrote. He noted that the sanctions list is targeting those responsible for the deportation and forced adoption of at least 6,000 Ukrainian children. This is a clear violation of international law, including the Geneva Convention, as I raised at UN Security Council yesterday, Burrell said. On February 24, the EU countries approved the 10th package of sanctions against Russia due to its illegal invasion of Ukraine. It was reported that the new package envisages tighter export restrictions regarding dual use and technology, targeted restricted measures against individuals and entities supporting the war, spreading propaganda or delivering drones used by Russia in the war, and measures against Russian disinformation. Three civilians have been wounded in Russian artillery shelling of Kherson. The head of the office of the president of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, said this on his Telegram channel, Ukraineform reports. Today, due to artillery shelling of the city of Kherson, three local residents ended up in the hospital. Russian terrorists are fighting the civilian population, Yermak wrote. Earlier reports said that two employees of the Kherson Regional Emergency and Rescue Service were injured by Russian shelling on February 25. Russia has likely run down its current stock of Iranian-made kamikaze drones in Ukraine and is now looking for ways to replenish the stock. The UK Ministry of Defense said this in its latest intelligence update published on Twitter, Ukraineform reports. According to the update, there have not been any reports of Iranian one-way attack on Krid aerial vehicles, a YUA versus, being used in Ukraine since around February 15, 2023. Prior to this, the Ukrainian armed forces reported shooting down at least 24 Shahid-136 Awayue versus between late January and early February 2023, and scores were destroyed in the first few days of the year. This lack of Awayue V deployments likely indicates that Russia has run down its current stock. Russia will likely seek a resupply, the report said. British intelligence said that although the weapons do not have a good record in destroying their intended targets, Russia likely sees them as useful decoys which can divert Ukrainian air defenses from more effective Russian cruise missiles. Two employees of the Kherson Regional Emergency and Rescue Service have been injured by Russian shelling. According to Ukraineform, the Kherson Regional Military Administration said this in a post on the Telegram messaging app on Saturday, February 25. Two employees of the Kherson Regional Emergency and Rescue Service were injured by Russian shelling. Specialists were covering windows on Poltavska Street in Kherson with OSB panels when a new enemy attack began. The men suffered shrapnel injuries, the report said. The Regional Military Administration added that the victims had been hospitalized and were receiving the necessary medical assistance. 
On February 24, Russian troops attacked the Kherson region 73 times, killing one person. On the night of February 24 to 25, Russian forces shelled a cancer clinic in the Kherson region. U.S. President Joe Biden has ruled out for now sending advanced American F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. Biden said this in an interview with ABC News, Ukraineform reports. When asked if he thinks that Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky needs F-16s now, Biden said, no, he doesn't need F-16s now. When asked if that meant never, Biden said there was no way to know exactly what the Ukrainian defense would require in the future. However, according to him, there is no basis upon which there is a rationale, according to our military now, to provide F-16s. And he concluded, I am ruling it out for now. Photo, Office of the President of Ukraine Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has released a new video about the first year of Russia's full-scale war in Ukraine, the work of the Ukrainian military and the resistance of the Ukrainian people. According to Ukraineform, the head of state posted the video on Facebook. A year of resilience. A year of forbearance. A year of unity. The Invincible rose to fight in February. The Invincible will prevail, Zelensky wrote. The footage shows scenes of enemy shelling of peaceful cities, evacuation of Ukrainians, the work of volunteers, rescue operations, the resistance of Ukrainians to Russian forces, the work of doctors in dark operating rooms and, of course, the work of the Ukrainian military. Invincibility consists of the decision to put up a fight. And Ukraine put up a fight, and it began to resist, save and help, liberate and convince the world, according to captions in the video. Photo, Office of the President of Ukraine The EU announced an $18 billion macrofinancial aid package to Ukraine, and the USA will provide our country with up to $10 billion by September. In addition, there are many aid agreements with other countries. This year, the budget deficit is $38 billion. An $18 billion macrofinancial assistance package from the European Union has already been announced. We expect to receive $10 billion from the United States by September. We have an agreement with Norway on the disbursement of $7.5 billion over five years. This year, we expect $1.5 billion from Canada. There are also agreements on smaller amounts with other countries, Prime Minister of Ukraine Denis Shmihal told Forbes Ukraine in an interview. The Prime Minister noted that Ukraine had attracted more than $31 billion in external grants and loans, 38% and 62%, respectively, last year. Now, taking into account all agreements, about $5 billion more is needed to cover the budget deficit. We plan to attract this sum from the IMF, negotiations have already started, Shmihal said. UAH 17 billion is on a special account of the state fund for elimination of the consequences of Russian aggression, the prime minister added. According to him, this is the money that was confiscated from the subsidiaries of Russian Prominvest Bank and Mr. Bank and transferred by the Deposit Guarantee Fund. During the year, the fund will also receive a profit from the National Bank in the amount of UAH $35.5 billion. $1.5 billion will be disbursed by the USA, the package has already been approved by Congress. Separately, the United States has allocated $0.8 billion for the reconstruction of the energy infrastructure, Schmihal said. Moreover, the United States provided a gas-fired power plant worth about $18 million and several powerful generators. In Luhansk region, the situation remains steadily difficult but fully controlled by the Ukrainian troops who prevent the enemy from advancing. The situation here in Luhansk region remains steadily difficult but fully controlled by the defense forces. The offensives are ongoing in all directions, Svatov and Kremina, and all deoccupied settlements located along the front line and a little deeper come under fire. Bilohorivka direction is also difficult, Serhii Haidai, head of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration, said during the National News Telethon, Ukraineform reports with reference to the Luhansk Regional Military Administration's post on Telegram. At the same time, 
he emphasized that all the offensive actions of the Russians are futile because they suffer great losses everywhere and retreat to their previous positions. But all the enemy's efforts over the last couple of days are futile, they tried to advance with heavy equipment in Svatov direction but turned around and went back. In Kremina direction, there was a fairly powerful offensive attempt two days ago. Three companies went on the offensive in Kremina direction, but the Ukrainian defense forces withstood. Everything is fine. Out of three companies of invaders, only two got back to their positions. The Russians abandoned about 70 killed soldiers and roughly the same number of wounded, Haidai added. As reported, reaching the administrative borders of Donetsk and Luhansk regions remains a priority for the Russian invaders. The sounds of explosions are heard in the location of a large Russian military personnel cluster in temporarily occupied Mariupol district. The sounds of explosions along the line of Yalta village slash Yuryevka village, location of a large concentration of occupiers, in Mariupol district are reported. We verify the reports. Air raid alert was announced in Ukraine, but occupiers are struck. It's a good trend, Petro Andriyashenko, advisor to Mariupol city mayor, posted on Telegram. Read also, Ukraine army eliminates about 147,470 enemy troops as reported, nighttime strikes on the Russian military ammunition depot and military equipment in Mariupol on February 25 were confirmed. Today we were talking about those news. Ukraine has more than UAH 150B to restore housing, critical infrastructure, Shmihal. EU adopts 10th package of sanctions against Russia. Three civilians wounded in Russian artillery shelling of Kherson. UK intel, Russia has likely run down its current stock of Iranian drones. Two rescuers injured by Russian shelling in Kherson. Biden says Ukraine doesn't need F-16s now. Zelensky, the Invincible rose to fight in February, the Invincible will prevail. PM Shmihal outlines details of macrofinancial assistance from partners. Situation in Luhansk region remains difficult but fully controlled by Ukrainian troops. Explosions in large enemy personnel cluster near Mariupol reported.